I got the idea for this from watching the video Why I Became an Atheist by Jedi One Josh. And I posted it in the comments as well. Well, a condensed version I posted in the comments over there. But don't go there now. Hang on a second. Please watch my video first. Okay. What I want to talk about is a common objection by Christian apologists. You've probably heard it. There wasn't enough time before the Gospels were written for the orally transmitted accounts of Jesus to have been distorted into legend. Well, to answer this objection, I'd like you to think about urban legends. To make my point, I'll describe the evolution of my favorite urban legend. In the early 20th century, the story went like this. A man's wife woke him up. She told him there was a robber under the bed, but he told her it was only the family dog. It had just licked his hand, after all. The next morning, all of their valuables were gone. Now, the modern version, you've probably heard it, goes something like this. A girl wakes up to a strange noise. It scares her, but she puts her hand under the bed, and the dog licks it which reassures her. She goes back to sleep, wakes up the next morning, and then she goes into the bathroom. She's horrified to find her mutilated dog hanging in the shower. On the floor, there's a note written in the dog's blood that says, humans can lick too. Okay, that was a fun story, wasn't it? Note how much more shocking the story got with time. Shocking and more retellable. That's important. Keep that in mind. We can also look at how the very same embarrassing Dan Quayle quotes became embarrassing Al Gore, Al Gore quotes. And later, embarrassing W quotes. W quotes, sorry. Another thing. Ever notice how many urban legends are told as having happened to someone else? someone close, but not that close to the person telling them. This was even more the case before the internet. The story just had to be true because a friend of the person telling it knew the person it originally happened to. Sound familiar? Yes, the, suppose, the supposed eyewitness accounts of the resurrection and other miracles. Note that while we don't know with any certainty who authored any of the Gospels, Mark, the first Gospel, was, according to church tradition, hint, hint, written by a friend of a friend of Jesus. Oops, I'm sorry, did I say a friend of a friend? I mean a disciple of the disciple Peter. Sorry about that. Let's also note that all of this took place in a time of widespread illiteracy and superstition. Supernatural explanations were the norm for making sense of phenomena such as rain and lightning, which to people today are completely mundane phenomena. Note that I'm not by any means trying to say that Christ is purely mythical. I'm on the fence myself. Uh, but I, I, I do think there's probably the germ of a man or man who actually lived found in the Gospels. There's a germ of such a thing. What I'd like, though, is for people to, criti to critically analyze the Gospels in conjunction with, among other things, what we know about urban legends and how they spread and evolve. I'd like people to read the Bible and have the ability to say, probably, possibly, and probably not. Okay, now that you've watched the video, go over here look at the video description and copy the text between the lines and paste it into at least 10 religious themed videos or you will be killed in your sleep by the ghost of deposed African princess Kwelani Mbekwe.